It's my great honor to introduce David Gabay from uh, Princeton University. Uh, was a visitor to IHS 8586, he told me, and, and for sure for a number of short visits in the recent times, please. So the title of his lecture, as shown above, is Volumes of Hyperbolic <laughs> Three Manifolds. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. So it's, it, it, it's, it's really a uh, it's really great honor to, to be able to, to speak here on you know, in the conference celebrating this just, just this, you know, off-scale ach achievement of, of, of Grisha Perlman on the resolution of the Poincaré conjecture and, and the geometrization conjecture. So as I mentioned in, in the introduction to, uh, to, to Bill Thurston's lecture, is that, that Bill's investigations in, uh, towards, towards geometrization had just enormous influence outside of, of, of geometrization proper. And, uh, and, and, and Grisha Perlman, I mean, it's just, you know, this, the resolution of the geometrization conjecture, I mean, it, it's it certainly hoped and, and expected that, that it, will, it too will have just you know, tremendous effect, either you know, directly or inspirationally outside of issues outside of uh, geometrization. So, so this, this story, volumes of hyperbolic three manifolds, is is, is sort of a, is an is an area of, of a, sort of questions in mathematical questions about hyperbolic three manifolds that were were generated from from Bill Thurston's uh, seminal work in on, on hyperbolic uh, geometry, and 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 this led to this the question of of what is the smallest closed hyperbolic three manifold? So actually, just to say, just as a preliminary, when I, when I talk about manifolds, they're, they're always or orientable, and I believe uh, maybe through the that well. So, the, so this question, which has attracted a lot of attention for 30 years, of, of finding the smallest volume manifold, and and uh, and this 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 question generated by by Bill's work. Has is, is perhaps sort of the, the first spot outside of geometrization that that the work of of, of Perlman's had sort of a uh, you know major impact, and in, indeed it, it plays sort of important role in the in the final re resolution of uh, of this 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 problem, and I should say that you know the very the very last last piece of the problem that was joint work with. With uh, Rob Meyerhoff and, and, and Peter Milley, uh, well, well involves sort of s staring at this picture, which hopefully I'll, I'll have time to talk about, which, which is sort of a, a, a cusp diagram for, for a particular uh, one cusp hyperbolic three manifold. Anyway, I mean, understanding this is, is, is really about uh, understanding sort of the, the Morse, Morse theory. And, as uh, John Morgan explained in his lecture, sort of Morse theory was, was really discovered by, by Poincaré maybe 20 years before Morse was, was born. So, uh, so it's, it's really a pleasure to, to talk about something where we're uh, sort of introduced by Bill and uh, Grisha's work plays a big role and sort of the fi final key, key ideas are, are based on ideas of, of Poincaré. So, Okay, so let's, as a, sort of as an in introduction, just to, you know, remind you the, the classification of, of surfaces. So a closed, orientable, connected surface is, is sort of one of these guys. Uh, they're a uh, you know, surface of genus G, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and, 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 and surfaces are, are classified by their, their Euler characteristic. And as you all know that the sphere has a metric of constant plus one curvature, the torus a metric of zero curvature, and all the other surfaces have metrics of constant minus one curvature, which are also known as hyperbolic metrics. So, uh, of course, there's any, more generally, any compact surface is topologically just a, a closed surface with some finite number of open disks removed. So, so this leads to the classification of compact surfaces. 
in terms of their oiler characteristic and a and, and number of, of boundary components. And of course, one of the beauties of topology is that, that you could sort of present manifolds in, in various ways. And even though it's, you know, it, it's, uh, we all have this sort of a standard picture in our mind of what, our, what a surface is, that, that we have some things presented a little bit different. different. And, and one of the challenges of topology is to, is to sort of put some, uh, or, you know, the standard pick, under, understand how to see uh, a strange thing in a standard way. So in, 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 in two-dimensional geometry, we have, have the Gauss-Binet theorem, which is the inter, in the closed case, the integral of curvature is 2 pi times the Euler characteristic. So, so therefore, for a hyperbolic surface, uh, the area is, is minus 2 pi times the Euler characteristic. So the Euler characteristic is, is a linear function of, 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 of the area. So, so therefore, uh, since Euler characteristic you know, is, is, is a measure, it just, of course, classifies sur surfaces, but, but also it's, just, it's really a good measure of how complicated a surface is. The bigger the absolute value of the Euler characteristic, the more complicated the surface is. And so therefore, in the same manner, area is, 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 is just you know, a really good measure for, for, for Euler characteristic. For, area is a good measure for complexity. So, so now, now let's talk about dimension three. So, so to start with, we, we have the you know, Mostow rigidity theorem, proved by Mostow, and then for the closed case, and later Martin Prasad for the finite volume case in dimension three, at least. And, and that says that, that, uh, that metrics, hyperbolic structures on, on a, on a Complete manifold, complete finite volume manifold are, are unique up to isometry. And what that means precisely is that if you fix a manifold N and you put in two different metrics, then, then there's a map from N with respect to one hyperbolic metric to N with respect to the other, which is, which is an isometry. And, and furthermore, well, F is homotopic to the identity. So, so therefore, if you have any uh, uh, geometric invariant that comes out of the hyperbolic structure, such as volume, the length spectrum, you know, whatever, then, then those are now, thanks to Mosdale, are, are topological in, invariants. So I just need to, to mention that, that Mosdale, uh, you know, he, he showed that it was unique up to isometry where it's homotopic to the identity. And I think we all appreciate here in this conference in, for the punk ray conjecture that there's the issue of homotopy versus isotopy. And, and it was eventually shown that actually this F is isotopic to the identity. And, and, or in other words, the space of hyperbolic metrics is, is path connected. And, and actually, it's, it's contractible, which is sort of the hyperbolic equivalent to the hyperbolic version of the, of the generalized Smale conjecture, dimension three. So, so, so now we have this fundamental theorem of, of, of Thurston, which is, uh, maybe it's like, the, in some sense, a the fundamental theorem of, 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 of volumes for, for dimension three. And it's, it's the theorem of Thurston gen extending work of, of Jorgensen and, and Gromov. And, and that says that, that if, you, if you look at, at a hyperbolic three manifold of finite volume where the volume is some number, and you look at all the numbers that come from uh, volumes of, of a hyperbolic three manifolds, and, and those numbers is, is actually a closed subset of the real line. And, and furthermore, actually, it's, it's a, it's a well-ordered subset of, of type omega to the omega. And, and furthermore, there's only finitely many manifolds that can have the same volume. So, so what that means, sort of, in, uh, in plain English, I wish I could say in plain French, but th this is, is, is that if you look at, at the set of numbers, here's the real line, and you look at the set of numbers, then, then there's a, a smallest number, which is the volume of a, of a, of a closed manifold, of a, of, a, of a complete manifold. And then there's a, a second volume. Then there's a third volume. Then there's a fourth volume. Then there's a first limit volume. 
And then there's a second, then there's a first volume after the limit volume. And then there's a second limit volume. And there's a third limit volume and a fourth limit volume. And, da, da, da. and then there's a first limit of limit volumes. And then there's a next volume and, and so on and so forth. So, so, so this was uh, a beautiful theorem which, which has, uh, well, has, has, has some important implications. But before I say, say that, let me just sort of mention a contrast in, in other dimensions. In higher dimension, Wang should, if you just fix a dimension, then the set of volumes is, is, a, is a discrete s subset of the reals. I, maybe I just should mention that, that actually Jorgensen uh, proved that, that if you fix a number, like 20, and you look at all the complete hyperbolic manifolds of dimension less than or equal to 20, then there's some finite set of, of, of uh, cusped hyperbolic three manifolds where, where all these smaller volume manifolds are obtained by, by, by filling them. And, and uh, so what, what, what Bill observed is, is sort of multifold. One was that, that if you fix, say, a cusped manifold, then, then there's infinitely many fillings. In fact, almost, all but finitely many fillings will give you uh, say one cusp manifold, almost, almost all but finitely many fillings will give you uh, hyperbolic manifolds. And furthermore, the, the volume of those manifolds are all less than the volume of the unfilled manifold. So, so topologically, a, a one cusp manifold is simply a compact manifold, well, the interior of a certain compact manifold. And this compact manifold has boundary a, a torus. So, so if you have a cusp manifold, topologically, it's, it's just the interior of some compact manifold with a torus boundary. So, so filling means just, just fill in, just glue in a, a solid torus. So, so Bill showed that if you fixed, say, one cusp hyperbolic manifold, almost all the fillings are, uh, are hyperbolic. And furthermore, using this idea work uh, of Gromov and the Gromov norm, he, he showed that all the volumes were, were, uh, were strictly less. So, and, and, and there's also, they, they converged to this volume. So, so, so therefore, uh, so, so therefore, if you even fix this, this guy, then you look at all the fillings, they'll, they'll, they'll correspond to a sequence of points limiting to this one. And, and furthermore, well, there's this finiteness statement. So, right, so, so suddenly this leads to a whole cl cluster of, of interesting problems, that is, if you fix any type of, of hyperbolic manifold with, with some, any type of particular characteristic, say a manifold that's, uh, that's closed or has one or two or 23 cusps or it's fiber to Hawken, then, then since, the, since the set is, is well ordered, then there's always a minimal volume manifold in, in, in that collection. So suddenly that, that leads to this whole collection of interesting questions that have developed uh, a, a lot of interest. And, and actually, the, the investigation of these, these questions have, have really sort of helped, uh, really increase the understanding of, 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 of low volume manifolds. And I should mention this, 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 this well-ordered theorem extends, of course, to non-orientable manifolds and, and, uh, and, and orbifolds. So actually, uh, well, I guess they announced produced manuscripts in 2004, but the first part was published in 2009, Gehring and Martin. And Marshall Martin sort of found, found the smallest uh, or orbifold. So, so my, my goal today is, is, is to, to tell you a little bit about sort of the, this, this first one and uh, the co contribution of, of Grisha's work to, to its res resolution. But before I do that, let me mention sort of a, just a general question, which, which I think is just only being, the surface is only being scratched, which is this, what, what we call the hyperbolic complexity conjecture. And well, so it's basically due to Thurston, Hodgson, Weeks, and Matveyev, Fomenko, although they didn't exactly say it in this form. But, but all, th all three of them, Bill, in his original work, noticed that just studying knot complements, that sort of more complicated knots gave rise to sort of more volume. And, and Jeff, in, in his Snappy program, and more generally analyzed by H Hodgson and Jeff, Jeff Weeks, showed that just experimentally that, that sort of 
low topological complexity manifolds seem to have low volumes. And, and Matveyev Fomenko and their theory of, well, Matveyev's theory of sp special spines, uh, for looking at closed, closed manifolds, notice there's a, a, co a correlation between closed manifolds and topology and, and geometry. And so I think a really interesting question, try to make a connection bet between these two. And so this question is sort of, sort of open-ended open in the sense of, of what is re re really meant by low and what's topological complexity. And I should also add, the, the, the formulation here, the way we make it, is, is, that, uh, is that if you have, say, low-volume closed manifolds, then their low topological complexity in the sense that they're obtained by, by filling manifolds that have, have low compl com complexity. So I'll, I'll talk about sort of proposed uh, idea of this, this complexity in, in a little, little bit later. So, right, so anyway, here's maybe a, a picture you, sh you should just have in mind sort of, uh, sort of s schematically for, for what a what a, what a cussed manifold looks like. I mean, it has this, so this, this compact part and, uh, and, and then a complete finite volume cusp manifold has a, this compact part and, and then it has, has these ends which are, which are sort of topologically just torus cross half open interval and geometrically they have sort of a, a very particular nice structure and this comes out of, uh, you know, you know um, like Margulis, you know, theory of, of, of manifolds with, with sort so of small translation lengths. So the topological picture is this. Actually, uh, Bill flashed sort of a sim similar picture yesterday, which is, which is that if you have a cusp manifold, then, then you can ask, well, what does the preimage of a cusp look like in the universal cover? Well, the universal cover is topologically, uh, topologically hyperbolic three space. Hyperbolic three space, you can think of stuff lying above the xy plane. And, and the preimage of a, of a cusp are, are horror balls that are that are that are tangent well horror balls which are uh, which in the upper half space model correspond to round balls that are that are tangent to sphere at infinity so so here you can see all these round here's so some of them these are round balls uh, tangent to this to, to the x y plane but also there's also one round ball one pre image which is stuff which is the, in the upper half space model which is which is the cusp at, at infinity, which is the, everything lying above, including, say, the x, so the plane uh, z equals 1, so everything above z equals 1. And remember, the, 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 this, this thing, these, these horribles pr project down to solid tori. So if you, so if you take the, the cusp at infinity and you mod out by sort of a z plus z translation, where here you can see this, this parallelogram, which is the, the fundamental, fundamental uh, domain for the, for the, for the action. Then, uh, then that's a fundamental d domain for when the projection downstairs. So, um, right. So, right. So, so anyway, my, my goal is to, to tell you about about this this uh, this, this theorem. Uh, so, actually, explicitly, the this, the the weeks manifold, the unique smallest volume closed hyperbolic three manifold, and. Topologically, it's obtained by doing uh, surgery in the Whitehead link complement. So you just drill out this uh, little neighborhood of the Whitehead link, re-glue solid tori according to some uh, surgery description, and, um, and, and then that's, that's the weak, Weeks manifold. And I should mention it was conjectured smallest by Joseph Szyzycki. Uh, he, he was uh, studying uh, surgery and punctured torus bundles, and actually he, he discovered that, that one, uh, well, if it was hyperbolic, would would be made of two uh, tetrahedra, one which was, uh, was negatively oriented, whatever that means. So, so it would have to have pretty small volume. And on the other hand, Jeff, in his in his sort of his, his snappy program, experimentally constructed uh, all these hyperbolic uh, manifolds, and, and notice this this one was the smallest one. So, anyway, this this question of finding the smallest volume manifold has has a as a as a long history, and uh, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess it was at some point it was known that that there was some lower bound on volume, 
but uh, the first explicit number was given by, by Rob Meyerhoff, which was 0 0.0006. Remember, the, the, the actual number is, is in the order of 0 0.9427. So, uh, so, right. So, but to start, but, but actually, the, the remarkable thing is you can see here sort of a little bit of the history. But the remarkable thing is, is, is almost all the, these results here actually play a role in the, in the final resolution. In fact, like, like this, this result is, is needed to, to pr prove some compactness theorem, which is, lemma, which is used in sort of this, this which, which gave maybe 200-fold imp improvement. So, so my, my goal for this, this lecture is, is to explain sort of, well, to, you know, where, where this, this, this sort of fits, fits in. But before I do that, I, I, I need to mention this, this theorem of, of myself with Rob Meyerhoff and Nathaniel Thurston, which, which we sort of well produced in 1996, but it took seven years in the referee publication process. <laughs> uh, in, in part because it was this, this involved this huge uh, computer assist, rigorous computer assisted proof. And uh, so, but, but what you should get out of this is that, is that if you take a closed hyperbolic three manifold, then uh, then either its volume is, 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 is reasonably large, it's bigger than, than the Weeks manifold, or its shortest geodesic has a reasonably thick tube. So if you look at a shortest geodesic, then, then you could put a, a tube of radius, embedded tube of radius log 3 over 2, natural log 3 over 2. So, okay, so, uh, so, so now I want to get into this Perlman business. So this, 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 this point, was, uh, is, is due to Agle and, and Dunfield. And, and what, what I'm going to explain now is, is the version uh, of, this, of, of this, 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 this theorem that's, that appears in a, in a paper of Agle, Storm, and Thurston. So, so, uh, so, so basically this, this theorem, which you can, you can see here, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's sort of well, here's a, a, a statement, but what it, what it simply addresses is the following question. So, so Bill showed that if you have, a, say, a one-cusp manifold and you do a filling, then, and you get a hyperbolic manifold, then the, then the volume of the filled manifold is a little bit smaller. But the question is, how smaller is it? And, 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 and this, this theorem gives, gives a lower bound in terms of certain geometric information about how much, how much smaller this, this manifold is. So in particular, if you have a cusp manifold, let's, let's, call it, uh, let's call it N gamma, and, and your closed manifold is obtained by, by, by filling it, and, and, uh, or said another way, the cusp manifold is obtained by drilling out a solid torus from the closed manifold, then, then we have sort of a formula here which gives a, a, a lower bound on the filled manifold in terms of the volume of the cusp manifold and and the radius of the tube about the curve that was drilled out. So, I mean, it doesn't, you know, to actually get this inequality, you have to sort of solve for this, this thing over here. But, uh, but, but that's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the point. So, uh, right. So, let me put on the handwritten version. So, um, so I, I want to give, give you a hint as to, as to why this is true. So it's about, it's about understanding sort of this, 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 this picture here. So, so this thing over here is supposed to be, well, I'm describing a metric, a metric on, on the manifold obtained by, by removing an, an, well, an open solid torus. So, so ori original manifold is N. And this manifold has, a, has this geodesic gamma, and I'm, and I'm drilling out a neighborhood of that geodesic. So topologically, that's, that's the cusp manifold. So, so here's, here's, a, here's a metric on it. So, so here's, here's a metric on the cusp manifold. Well, first, drill out the solid torus from the closed manifold and, and, just, and just, just leave the, the original hyperbolic metric there. Now, now, if you have a, 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 a closed geodesic, then the neighborhood of that geodesic is the this, this, this solid tube, and 
the boundary is, is a torus with a Euclidean structure. And so, so, so you can, so on the other hand, the boundary of a cusp has a Euclidean structure, and there's, a, a, and there's lots of flexibility in, in, in building sort of cusps. So, so you can always find a cusp which, which has this, the same Euclidean structure as the boundary of, of this torus. So, so what, what you do is, is, is you, glue, you well, at the first approximation, you, you glue in such a cusp. Now, actually, you have to do something slightly different. You have to glue in actually a scaled version of the cusp. So, so if you look at a cusp, there's, I mean, it's topologically, uh, it's, it's topologically just torus cross, cross R. And if the cusp has a particular Euclidean structure, well, so does any uh, uh, horizontal section. And so, so using the right, you know, cutting off that cusp at the right section, then you can, uh, then you could sort of, and, and, you scale, and, you, and you rescale that sort of, that, that, that cusp, then you can, you can get sort of, uh, like, and you can glue in sort of rescaled versions of that. So, so, so the point is, you, you find first the right uh, geometric cusp, and then you sort of glue in a rescaled version with the property that, that sort of it, it, at the level of the torus, it matches up isometrically. And second, that, if you, that the mean curvature coming from, from, the, from the rescaled cusp exactly equals the mean curvature coming from, from, from this guy. Now, uh, that's, that's what you want. It's a first approximation. But you also want this metric to have scalar curvature bigger and equal everywhere bigger and equal to minus 6. So, uh, so this, this one, it, it might be too, too, too small. So, so you have to scale it by, by some, some factor. And it turns out the factor you need is, is, is uh, cloth cubed, cloth 2R cubed, where R is this tube radius. So anyway, what this is, this is meant to be a schematic for a, uh, for a metric on, on the cusp manifold. Now, now it, it turns out that if you look at the, so this is an explicit metric here, and if you calculate the met this metric, then, then, this, 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 then the number you get is, is, is exactly sort of the right-hand side of the theorem, this, this, the right-hand side of star. And, well, which is a good thing. And, and now, on the, on the other hand, well, this, this is only a C0 metric, because the way we glued up, it's only C0 along this torus. On the other hand, you can take this metric and approximate it by a smooth metric, very closely approximate it, which satisfies the scalar curvature condition. And, uh, and, and, this, and this is sort of along, along the lines of the work of Bray and Miao. So, so now, you, we have this, this metric, which which, which satisfies, uh, well, it, well, it has a scalar curvature, well, it's approximated by the smooth metric, scalar curvature bigger than or equal to minus 6. And uh, on the other hand, we have, so that's this metric on the cusp manifold. On the other hand, we have this, uh, this hyperbolic manifold over here. So, so now you, you, so here's where, where, where Perlman comes in. So now you apply the, the Ricci flow to, with surgery to this to this metric, and 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 because of this, this initial con condition, then the monotonicity of, of the Ricci flow says that 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 when eventually you get down to the to the constant cur cur well the, the hyperbolic one, then the, the volume is go going to be be decreasing. So so therefore the, the this this thing with the hyperbolic metric that's that's our cusp manifold with with the original. Uh, with, with original metric, so uh, so that's so that's sort of where uh, so so thanks thanks to the you know well Egil Dunfield showed that thanks to Perlman that that we get this 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 inequality. So, so uh, yes. Just what what exactly do you use in Perlman? I mean the Ricci flow is not. Uh, well, what I mean is this: here, here's here's a here's a manifold with the Riemannian metric, and and then you apply the you know a Perlman's theory to to take a manifold with the Riemannian metric to a manifold with a metric of constant minus one curvature, and and the, the point is under under the under this 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 
uh, transformation, uh, Perlman showed that, that under this hypothesis, that, that volume is, uh, is, is, is monotonically decreasing. So, so there, therefore, this, this one is, is sort of this, this funny metric, but explicit. This one on the left, well, this one on the left, left on, over here, is, is the hyperbolic metric. And, and, and therefore, we get, we get this, uh, this inequality. So, uh, so you just, just might observe that this inequality here on the right is a function of r and l. But uh, an equivalent formulation is that, is that, uh, is, is that uh, is, 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 well, is, is, that, is that you could replace this, this, this term here by this term equivalently, where this is the volume of, of the, this tube of radius r about, about gamma. And, and the volume of the, well, of course, the tube is a sub lives in the manifold itself. So if you just replace this volume T by just the volume of the manifold, then, and then, you, then you get a, an equation involving the cusp R and the, and the, and the filled manifold. And, uh, and, and therefore, you can, in, in that way, you get a, a lower bound for, the, well, you, you get a lower bound for the manifold in terms of uh, the, you know, the, the cusp volume and, and uh, the, 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 the cusp volume and, and and, and R, so so I, I should say that 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 the that uh, well that that the, the, that this this work was was based on earlier work of of Agel, where where instead of um, we're, we're here we're we're find, finding metrics with his scalar curvature condition, but in, instead of uh, instead of finding a metric with a scalar curvature condition, if you find a metric with a with a Ricci curvature condition, then then you can you can apply sort of a like a well an inequality of of um, of uh, of Bolan, Connell, and, and Suto. But the Bolan, Connell, Suto theorem is is a theorem about open manifolds, and and but so the so the foundational theorem in the subject is this. Uh, is due to Besson, Courtois, Gallo, where they, they prove sort of inequality of, of about, about volume for, for closed manifolds, which sort of led to, which was, you know, you know their celebrated work in the solution of Gromov's minimal volume conjecture for closed hyperbolic three manifolds. So, uh, right, so, so let me just, just say as a corollary of this, well, a corollary of, uh, of, of this Egel Dunfield theorem using Perlman is, is that if n's a closed hyperbolic three manifold and its volume is at most 0.9428, which is slightly higher than the Weeks manifold, then this manifold is obtained by filling a one cusp hyperbolic three manifold of volume at most 2.848. So therefore, if you could f figure out all the, vi all the one cusp manifolds of, two point of volume at most 2.848, and, and do the and understand their fillings, then then you have a, then you could attempt to uh, find the, the, the smallest volume manifold. So so I should mention this involves a, a, a packing estimate of of Andrew Przeworski, where because remember we we took this this term here and replaced it by by m, and also it 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 it, it needs the uh, you know the, this 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 estimate for for volume. For the for the two well two radius estimate of, of this theorem with Meyerhoff and Nathaniel Thurston. So, and I should also well, you know, you know the experts in the audience might be, be cringing when they when they see this discussion because because Perlman's work is is about Ricci flow on, on closed manifolds, and and actually this you know when I uh, made, made this discussion here. We we're actually told, you know, I, I, I was making assertion about Ricci flow on, on a cusp manifold. But the reality is that, that thanks, thanks, thanks to Bill, that these cusp manifold, the original cusp manifold, is approximated in the Gromov Hausdorff limit by, uh, by, by closed manifolds. And anyway, and, and you, could, you could play sort of the same game where you have a closed manifold with an which, is, which has a tube about an extremely tiny geodesic, so geometrically it's almost like a cusp manifold, and you can actually make estimates like this based on closed manifolds. So, so actually, the, 
technically there's a, it's, it's, I mean, this is really the idea that actually, to actually really use Perlman, you have to talk about closed manifolds and you can do sort of an appro right approximation. So, right. So, so anyway, so I just have, well, I, so I, I want to now explain how to, uh, well, okay, so, so if we were, now we, we want to take it to a next level. I mean, if, how to find, uh, how to find the, the smallest closed manifold. And, and thanks to Eagle Dunfield, it's, 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 we need to understand fillings on, on manifolds with uh, one cusp manifolds, volume of 2.848. So, so the question is, well, what I'd like to just tell, give you a hint now is just to give you an intuition of how you might uh, go about doing such a thing. So, so here is, is, is the cusp diagram for, for one cusp, for a particular one cusp hyperbolic manifold. It's, it's manifold in Jeff's notation, M011. And so, so here's a basic, basic fact, which is that the volume of a cusp is exactly equal to one half of the area of the boundary torus. So, so therefore, if if you if you have a one cusp manifold, and if the and if you looked at a say a maximal cusp, the cusp sort of pushed out till it touches itself, and then and that cusp had had big area, well then then you'd be very happy. I mean, so 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 therefore, if you're looking at one cusp manifolds with with very big big cusps. Then, then, then you're in good shape. On the other hand, if you have cusps which are kind of smallish, but, uh, but, they, but on the other hand, if you're looking out from the cusp, you don't see, you, know, you, know, you just see a lot of blank space. I mean, you know, here, this is this cusp. This, so this is a diagram of a maximal cusp. So, I, so you have a cusp, and you sort of push it down, and eventually sort of it touches itself. So it's, it's touching itself along you know, these, these four spots, but could, could very well be like a lot of empty space in the middle. So if you had a lot of empty space in the middle, then, then you could find you know, lots of volume outside the cusp. So, so at least at the heuristic level, that if you could have a, a, small, a smallish volume one cusp manifold, it's going to have to have, well, intuitively, you'd expect it to have a, a small, small fundamental domain. And also, when you looked at, at other horribles, and, uh, translates under the fundamental group, it, it should sort of f fill in this. You should, you should see some fairly large, large balls. So, uh, so here's, here's where sort of this idea of, of, sort of the Morse theory that is, is sort of discovered by, by Punk Ray comes in, which is, which is that is, is that, okay, if we have a horror ball, so, so, that, so that's sort of like okay, this, this neighborhood of infinity, and now you, you make it grow a little bit, then it sort of touches itself in the standard Morse theory, theory way is that, that every time it touches itself, as it gets bigger, that's sort of the creation of one handles. And, and then when you uh, thicken it up a little more, expand a little more, then you, then you get sort of the higher dimensional handles, and eventually it sort of fills up the whole space, and you have this handle structure in the manifold. And, uh, and uh, so, so, so therefore, you know, if you look at this picture here, that, okay, here's, here's where it's touching. So there's, there's, there's already one handles here, but you look at like guys like this, which are a little bit smaller. Well, you can, you can see that intuitively, at least, there's, there's ultimately going to be a one handle here. And maybe this, this is also maybe big enough that this is going to correspond to a one handle here. So, so the biggest guys, you could see, you could feel on the inside that there's going to be one handles. On the other hand, here you could see like, here's like three guys that are three horribles that are pack, packed in really close together. So, so you, could, you could see when, 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 the, when the, you know, in the expansion of the Morse, you know, when the, the cusp expands, it's almost guaranteed to be a two handle right here. So, 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 like right here, there's going to be, be t you know, t t two handles, and uh, so, so, so therefore, you know, when you stare at these pictures long enough, then you could sort of see just jumping out at you the, uh, the you know, the, the, the handle structure. So, so therefore, 
but, but let me just, just point out that th this two handle is, is, is going to be valence, valence three, because here you can see like a little one handle here, one handle here, one handle here. And this two handle, when it fills in, it's going to be valence three. So that valence three two handles should play a special role in this, this discussion. And, and that leads to this idea of, of the, the mom complexity, which is, so this is like a really simple definition, which is if you have a manifold with, say, a torus boundary, or two torus boundaries at least, I mean, a manifold's boundary union of tori, then, then the, we'll call it mom complexity, because this is, is that you start with it, this thing, and if you put in, you build the manifold by putting in some number of one handles, and then putting in some number of two handles, and then the mom complexity is the minimal number of handles that you need. That is, it's the minimal n such that you need the smallest number of, 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 the manifold could be built by adding n one handles and n two handles of valence three. Or valence three means the two handles run over one handles at most three times. So, so that leads to a, a, a measure of complexity on a three manifold, which is that if you're just given any three manifold, say closed or one cusp or whatever, then you can look inside of that three manifold, all the, all the sort of manifolds you get by just drilling out uh, solid tori. And if you draw out, if you close manifold, draw out two solid tori, then you have a manifold with two, two boundary components. And, and so the, the mom number is the smallest n such that it, that it has sort of a, like a, that you think a cusp manifold in, inside of, of, of mom complexity n. So, uh, so therefore, that's when I mentioned the Thurston's uh, top, uh, uh, top uh, well, this hyperbolic complexity con conjecture. This, this is actually a, a pretty good measure of, of complexity. Anyway, uh, so so here's a little theorem of of Peter Milley that um, that says that if you look at say that a manifold has volume at most 0.93 and it's obtained by filling. Uh, a, a, a mom, uh, well, a mom manifold, mom less than or equal to three manifold, then, then that manifold is the weak's manifold. And, well, again, it's, it's based on understanding, you know, uh, more concretely fillings of uh, the topology of fillings that was ge generated by Thurston's seminal work. But it uses sort of more modern technology, which well, in the modern form, it's by Feuder, Calfagiani, Purcell, Snappy and Snap, et cetera, and Harriet Moser, rigorized such. But, but these guys, in turn, it's based on uh, you know, Gromov's uh, Thurston 2 pi theorem, uh, the work of Besson, Courtois, Gallo, and, and, and stuff, you look, look inside. So, right, so, so therefore, we need to find all the, the mom less than or equal to three manifolds, and, uh, well, so, so here's, uh, well, so, so here's, here's the theorem that, that we prove is that if you have a complete one cost hyperbolic manifold, the volume less than or equal to 2.848, then, uh, then this, this manifold's obtained by filling uh, one of, uh, you know, one, one of the, one of, is, is by, by filling one of these MOM2 or MOM3 manifolds. And it turns out there's only three MOM2 manifolds and, 18 mom three, three manifolds. So, uh, so anyway, it's, it's out of time, but let me just, just quick, quickly say that it's, it's well, it's, it's really about, uh, you know, just to get the intuition at least of what to do. Uh, it's, it's really about, about under, understanding this, this picture because you, you could just staring at this picture, you, you could see how, uh, well, let's, let's not use that one. So let, look, well, look at, Look at that. I mean, here's just two different points of view of the same thing, where here is, uh, well, here you can see, this is, well, you have to stare at this picture for a long time, but this is sort of a, showing how to see sort of the mom, this mom manifold in uh, sitting inside of this, you know, this, so, so here you can see this, this, this you know, here's this, this, this one cusp manifold, but sitting inside of this is this, this mom uh, two manifold. And here's, well, it has, well, let me just quickly just, just, just say, just that here you, you see these labels, one, two, one, two, two three, whatever. But the, 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 oh, yeah, you're right. I can't, you can't see, thanks. So, so the point is, like, remember, the group, the fundamental group is acting here. So, so if you see this edge with the one, that means when you take an element of fundamental group, this, this one is, 
is, is moving to here, and there's a vertical one. And two, so these, this, 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 two, this edge here, this two handle here, is the same as, as this one here under the fundamental group. And so, so you can see that th there's a, this, there's a, this two, sorry, this one handle labeled one, a one handle labeled one, one hand, hand, handle labeled two. So, th so there's, these two handles are going over these, these, these one handles. And so anyway, there's just to, to actually make this, this all into sort of here, you just rush, you can see, you know, just get blurring before your eyes sort of the, this, 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 sort of this theory. But, uh, but, but ultimately, you know, you see these, these things and it, you might say, oh, that's obvious, here's where they are. But, but, but what looks like a, a handle structure when you project down to the manifold could be a mess. But you have to deal with such, and you can deal with it. And uh, anyway, just just to, just to close, maybe just to re, just mention two two questions. Well, first, well, first of all, there's this multitude of questions about about low volume manifolds, topologically and also number theoretically. But there's also just related questions about sort of just totally the other di 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 direction. You know, what about you know manifolds that are ultra large in, in many different senses? What's what's the sort of structure of such things? And, and if I understood what Bill was saying yesterday, you know, there's the question of what's, what's the structure of the space of, uh, of, well, if you look at just the space of three manifolds, you think of those as, as vertices of some graph and two, there's maybe a directed edge where you have uh, one, you know, one thing's taken by filling or surgery and, and the other one, and, 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 and Thurston's was hinting at, well, maybe there's like an interesting structure, structure theory, theory of, of those. And, and you might want, you know, use the word that mom, I didn't even talk about that. I mean, Thurston in his original discussion, you know, he talked about sort of this, you know, manifold obtained by, say, filling. This, this guy's obtained by filling, you know, three cusps of that one. And he, he called this one sort of the grand, maybe the grandmother, great grandmother of, of that one. And so we sort of, you know, usurp that term and, and just call these things sort of moms. And so, anyway, I think that's all I have Are there questions? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Cedric. Just curious about this. You, you talked about this computer-assisted proof. Yes. You, talk, you talked about these computer-assisted proofs. Did I, did I read it right that you used 32,000 tests to discard the various candidates for the, for the minimal manifold? Or? Well, uh, we, ha we had this, 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 this parameter set that was sort of this, this rectangle in C3. It was, it was chopped up into about a half a billion regions. And, uh, and it, was, it was a matter of associated to each region was, was like an element of, well, of, of a group. And, and, the, and the group led to a contradiction of one or two different types. And we had to use about uh, 16,000 different words. So, so, the, so the all, all but seven regions were dispatched because of one of these 16,000 words, but each word had corresponded to two types of contradictions. So, so, that's, so, we, so we really did need about 32,000 tests, so to speak. Can we have an idea, can we have an idea of what were these reasons that you do? Oh, well, uh, well the, the point is that, that, that if you have a, sh a shortest geodesic, then, uh, and, and, and it has sort of a thick tube, then, then, then sort of a, a candidate for that is in hyperbolic space is sort of a, a translation is a group generated by two generators, one, say, generating sort of the shortest geodesic, another taking this guy to sort of a nearest translate. So there's sort of a three complex parameter space of such things. And actually, by this point, 0, 0, 0, 6 theorem of, 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 uh, of Meyerhoff, that that space is, is actually compact. So therefore, there's sort of this C3's, a rectangle C3's worth of, 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 of possible a parameter space of group elements, and for given one of the, those, you look at the group generated by sort of this this translation here and sort of this translation here, and and that group, well, you maybe just look at, at some some word, you know, you know say uh, say just simply the translation here, well, that word might have a smaller uh, translation length, so that's a contradiction to the fact that that this guy over here to start with was the shortest geodesic. Or some, some word, if this is F and this is G, like F, G, F, G or something, that, that guy might be out here. And, and that guy, well, might, its its length might be sort of long. Well, it might be sort of longish. But, the, but, but on the other hand, if you, if you apply that translation length to the, the original guy, you might get 
a guy that's, that's too close. So contradiction in terms of length and distance are the two types of contradictions. More questions? More questions? OK. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much.